Good morning. I'm your host, Claudia Shamba, welcoming you to the October 30, 2018 edition of Ask a Leader. One week till the midterm elections, folks, and today is the deadline for your absentee ballot filing, and today is full service voting early at the pop-up at UCI at the Flagpole Pavilion adjacent to the administration building. Today, we continue local election coverage with Irvine City Council candidates Kev Abizajian, UCI physicist, in the first segment, and in the second segment, Frank McGill, an urban planner. After the show, listen for a podcast we'll conduct later this morning for City Council candidate Farrakhan. We'll be right back after a short station break. Welcome back to the show, everyone. My guest in this segment is UCI astrophysicist and city council candidate, Kev Abizajin. He also serves as the director of the Center for Cosmology at the university. His work includes studying the origin, structure, and composition of the universe and fundamental physics governing it. He's flipping the perspective completely to run as a municipal candidate. Ha! He's a member of the executive board of the Center for Cosmology, the Department of Physics and Astronomy at UCI. And prior to coming to UCI, he was assistant professor at the University of Maryland. He was director's postdoctoral fellow at Los Alamos National Laboratory Theoretical Division and was a research associate at NASA Fermilab Theoretical Astrophysics Group. He earned his Bachelor's of Science at the University of Houston at University Park and both his Master's of Science and PhD at UC San Diego. All this work in the era of politicized climate science brings him down to earth in the muck of the crossfire of of climate skepticism, which is bringing to some uh, civic leadership. Kev serves on the Cal State University UC Cal Bridge undergraduate program, the UC Irvine Council on Faculty Welfare, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Friend of Science Network, Union of Concerned Scientists, the Board of Advisors, and California Coordinator for 314 Action, the Armenian National Committee of America, Armenian Assembly of America, the American Astronomy Society, and the American Physical Society. Kev's cut his teeth on civic engagement and politics dating back several decades in the Western states. Hence, endorsements include the Sierra Club, Orange County League of Conservation Voters, Southern California Armenian Democrats, Armenian National Committee of America, and 314 Action. And uh, he is making his way to the studio. He's not joining me in studio yet, but he will be. Welcome to Ask a Leader, Kev Abizajian. Thank you so much, Claudia, for having me on. Well, uh, we're going to be asking everyone that are on, well, most of people, I haven't gotten answers back from a few of the candidates running for the two open seats for Irvine City Council, but we're trying to keep very comparably uh, questions to each one of you. And so we'll start, Kev, what for many years, Irvine has established and been known for its unique and visionary institution building what stands out to you as something worthy of building upon? Well, I, I mean, the thing that comes to me right away is the university. Um, the university was founded as a kind of a founding institution for the city, and um, it predates the city by about six years. And, um, you know, it was uh, uh, the jewel. If you look at the original plans uh, that Pereira made of the city, uh, the, the streets of um, Culver and Jeffrey are like a necklace, and um, uh, when Jeffrey turns into the university, that ne- that necklace crosses, and UCI is the jewel at the end of that necklace, and uh, you know that symbolically represents the role that UCI has played in the, the city for a long time. Um, and I think uh, it's time for this, the university to actually take a bigger role in this community today. Well, so actually in the earliest parts of your campaign on your stump, 
Um, I've heard you talk, uh, make some interesting connections also with the city and the uh, the town and the gown with respect to uh, the ozone layer. Right, yeah. So, the, uh, you know, UCI's role in the city uh, uh, you know, predates it, but also is really integrally part of it um, from the 1970s until today. And in the 1970s, UCI had a, a really remarkable um, uh, role in uh, in shaping the future of uh, an environmental uh, catastrophe that was unfolding, which was the destruction of the ozone layer. And uh, in the 1970s, uh, Sherry Rowland, working with his postdoctoral scholar Mario Molina, they found that uh, chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs were destroying the ozone hole. And uh, well, they, well, they destroy ozone in particular is what they found in the lab. And then they modeled what it would do in the atmosphere, and they found that um, that that uh, would be destroying the ozone layer. And this was originally just from modeling, but they actually found that it was also occurring um, uh, actually in the real atmosphere in the 1980s. And this actually led to, uh, you know, prior to any other municipality taking action, it was actually take, the action was taken by um, the city of Irvine. Uh, the city of Irvine was the first municipality to comprehensively ban CFCs altogether. And uh, the historians of this policy epoch say that was actually crucial to get other municipalities and uh, institutions and governors or governor, governments on board to uh, the banning of CFCs uh, in the 1980s and uh, also to passing the Montreal Protocol, which was an international treaty that banned CFCs globally and put in a process in place to do that. And in uh, 1995, Sherry Rowland and Mario Molina were awarded the Nobel Prize for this work um, of uh, basically solving the ozone hole problem. And, uh, you know, the magnitude of the problem is actually hard to overstate because if the ozone layer were to be destroyed, we would actually see uh, plant life be harmed at temperate latitudes and even tropical latitudes because UV radiation would harm the plant life and entire ecosystems would be destroyed. Um, so, 89, they passed the protocol, and in 1995, Mario Molina and Sherry Rowland got the Nobel Prize for this work. And in 2006, the ozone hole stopped expanding. And this is a, a huge, um, huge positive uh, outcome of something that started right here at UCI. So we're getting a, a, a flavor of the multitasking city council candidate, Kev Abizadjian, and we can envision how this translates into some... Uh, yes, we're here. Are you here? I'm here, so I'll walk into the studio. Okay, you got the door up opening now. up. <laughs> we're going to get him plugged in to the microphone right there. He was just talking about the uh, the model ordinance for for all time out of Irvine, with the, uh, the addressing the CFC consumption, and then we're I'd like to have Kev then talk about that. That's a model that that was those. That's evidence of what municipal leadership can do. What is your own vision of what you would do with municipal leadership? Were you on the council serving, Kev? Well, um, you know, with Irvine being such a leader in the past and uh, being a place that actually is such forward thinking and a positive um, kind of framework that they um, that they really uh, have uh, based their their uh, their you know vision on uh, it's actually been such a desirable place to live because of this kind of uh, forward thinking inclusive framework evidence based value driven uh, um, community and so um, uh, that's that's really something that's that's led to um, UCI you know being an integral part of that that relationship with the city so um, I think a lot of the positivity and the, the um, uh, kind of uh, community driven um, framework that was 
uh, the founding of, East, of Irvine and the city, uh, has kind of been lost in the past 10 years or so. And uh, particularly in the eight years that I've been here, you've seen that the city council is actually completely detached from the community and its values. If you see that what this community is, it's actually progressive, it's inclusive, it's diverse, it's a uh, wonderful place to live because of that. It's got a majority minority population um, and a majority or about half of the population are immigrants. So um, like me, I came to the U.S. when I was five years old and um, uh, escaped the Soviet Union with my parents and came to the land of the free. And uh, that's the same kind of vision that draws a lot of people to the U.S. and particularly to Irvine. So right now, the city council is actually uh, exclusive. It's narrow. It's not data driven. Well, we'll get we'll get into some of those things for sure. comparable questions with all of the candidates. So, uh, well, we'll take that up then. Uh, the Senator or Mayor Wagner uh, put out. Uh, twice now on the agenda before the city council, a, a measure to uh, defy, if, if, if in effect, uh, the Senate Bill 54, the sanctuary city measure. How would you handle that measure that he put on the agenda that was, it was postponed, we, it may still come back because it, it seems to be a, a, of interest to him. How would you handle that? Were you serving on the council, Kim? Well, I plan to be and hope to be on the council with the voters of Irvine weighing in right now, including on campus. You can go to the flag polls and vote. Anybody that's a registered voter can go and vote right now at the flag polls at UCI. Or if you're not even registered to vote, you can come and vote provisionally and your vote will be counted if you're a valid voter or eligible to vote. So um, how to handle that is, um, you know, we have to speak forcefully for the communities that uh, have to be served by our city. And those communities include immigrants. As I just said, we over about half of our city are, are immigrants. And um, they have to be able to trust local officials. And in particular, they have to be able to trust the police. If something goes wrong, property crime, or even worse, violent crime happens to them, they need to be able to contact the police no matter what, no matter their documentation status with the federal government. And if they can't, that means that crime is something that gets a, that they will get away with. Uh, the criminal will. So we need to, you know, speak in on behalf of immigrants uh, of all backgrounds, of all documentation status, and make sure that they are comfortable coming forward to the police if a crime occurs. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be married to Sharis Kubrin. She's a professor here at UCI, and. Um, She's a uh, professor of criminology, law, and society. She's uh, definitely uh, the better half of me. And um, she's uh, written in the public policy uh, and politics uh, journal or, or newspaper called The Hill that the uh, sanctuary policy is actually good governance. And it's because of this reason. It's good governance because it, it protects communities. It protects the relationship between communities and the police. And uh, it... Um, uh, will reduce crime and also is more humane and really just leaves federal law enforcement, federal immigration enforcement to the police, uh, to the federal government. So, um, uh, yeah, so I would actually speak forcefully against any measures to try to get Irvine police involved in federal immigration enforcement. And I think the, ma the mayor is uh, majorly wrong in trying to change that. For those of you who've just joined us, my guest is Kev Abizajin, running for one of the two open seats on the Irvine City Council on our midterm election ballot next week. Kev's day job is UCI astrophysicist and executive board member of the Center for Cosmology. And so in the after hours, he's actively uh, involved as a board member of 314 Act, which promotes STEM education and careers. So uh, all the, I've been taking every single survey that's coming in, my landline. I've got to keep that landline. Never know what I'm going to need for civil emergency. So uh, all of the survey push questions I'm getting that are obviously for municipal candidates, I'm getting, they're all about traffic. Is there anything like smart development on candidates' minds that deal with what, uh, either in terms of the development orders that are issued for, for housing units or for uh, actual incentivizing for net zero kind of transportation choices? Uh, yeah, so... 
what's amazing about this entire race is that every single candidate, almost every single candidate, is talking about their traffic plan, that they've got a detailed one to reveal to everybody on November 7th, the day after the election, and they're going to solve everything. And, uh, I, you know, this is the same thing that we've heard every two years because we've gotten an explosion of growth that has led to enormous amounts of traffic and no other ways of getting around other than cars and roads. And, uh, you know, Irvine, as I said, is a visionary place, and it needs to uh, be that way in terms of its modes of transportation. We're really far behind our local regional counties like L.A. County, San Diego County, and having multiple modes of transportation uh, like um, you know, better busing, better uh, uh, things like streetcars, trolleys. You see the trolley system in San Diego is actually getting expanded to go straight through the heart of UCSD. And uh, we need that to happen right here in Orange County and right here in Irvine. Wait a minute. Ha- fixed rail and beautiful, lovely, luxuriating La Jolla? <laughs> fixed rail straight That's through the heart model. of La Jolla. That's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, um, and I mean, I, I'm still looking around. I use my bike whenever I can, and I'm looking for incentives for either what UCI's role is or wh- where developers put in th- infrastructure that accommodates locking up our bikes, lo- uh, our access, uh, ingress, egress with uh, uh, safely with our bikes, how we, how we can use the traffic lights to, you know, to cross. There's some really awkward gyrations, and not, so that's, yeah. a, that's a, the nano detail for a cosmologist, I guess. Um, so, but I, I don't know, uh, in the development order that you're securing from a development a developer, what would do in terms of the spatial relationships in signing off on either the special permits where there's a, a, a boost in density that's being considered for development order or in, any other thing that has an effect on upping the, the traffic quotient? Yeah, we need to really rethink what's going on in Irvine. What's going on in Irvine is a complete detachment from the original master plan that was worked out in the 1970s. And uh, the kind of rapidity of growth and the lack of the resources in that to serve that growth is felt by everybody. It's felt on our roads. It's felt in our shopping centers when you can't get a spot to park. And it's felt in our schools. There are parts of Irvine where the enrollment was 35% higher, I'm told, by school board members than it was expected this academic year. That's unacceptable. This needs to change. We need to have a better relationship with how growth is affecting everyday lives of our of our community. So one thing about development, and I have to bring this up because it just happened this weekend, okay, is that. I was attacked with a hit piece from a political action committee that is funded by the second biggest developer in Irvine, Five Point. Actually, they're not based in Irvine. They're an outside entity that uh, wants to basically control the Irvine City Council. They've got their favorite candidates, and uh, I'm not one of them. So they actually waged through a PAC, uh, a hit piece that was completely false and, frankly, slanderous against my personal character. And uh, they claimed that I used government resources uh, illegally for political activity. They claimed that um, I want a homeless tent city in Irvine, which couldn't be uh, further from the truth. And uh, they claimed that I'm a politician, which is, um, I don't know, I guess maybe that's an insult to them because they're all politicians uh, that are waging this against me. Um, But uh, I'm not a politician. I'm a professor, and I've never worked in politics. I've never worked for elected officials. I am a concerned community member that wants to serve this city. And, um, uh, you know, I think I'm I'm really disappointed in uh, the leadership at Five Point from funding the, being the majority of the funding. Do you know for what the name piece? of the pack was, so that people can t- look at their the the mailers because we're still getting mailers. Uh, actually, they're picking up exponentially. But what? yeah, so the major pack that's funding it is called Alliance for Jobs and the Economy. Okay. And if you look at that, it's got more than half of its funding from Five Point itself. Okay. I've been in contact with their PR person who hasn't returned my calls. Um, his name is Steve Cherm. Uh, I'd love to hear from you, Steve, if you're listening. Um, and I've also been in contact with my opponents that are being supported by that pack, Carrie O'Malley, Anthony Quo, and Don Wagner, the mayor. And uh, I would expect them if they, uh, you know, if I was having a pack uh, waging false, seriously false alle- allegations of illegal behavior on an opponent, that they would denounce that action publicly and ask for it to stop. 
that's what I would do. That's what I would expect them to do. And I haven't heard it. So let's move on to then that it, it overlapping what you're talking about that uh, the emergency housing resolution uh, with the parcel that was designated but it was signed off on by the city council up to, up to two or so years ago but the, the with the hot housing market in Irvine squeezing the middle uh, income households what measures have you in mind to address this then right so if you look at what's going on in Orange County now we've got uh, about 20% of the population that could afford the median income house. And that's unacceptable. That means we have a housing crisis, and you see it every day with people not be, uh, being able to afford this area. They're having to be inland in the inland counties and then have to travel into Orange County and Irvine to work. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you're not going to build your way out of this problem if you build only to the top of the market and not for the workforce that works here. And uh, Irvine has actually been visionary, as I've said. It's, it's a visionary place. It's the only city in Orange County that has an ordinance to require affordable housing uh, and housing affordability. And 15% uh, of any new development has to be for the median income level or lower. And um, we're actually behind in fulfilling that requirement, which is one of the problems here in Irvine. And we need to make sure we properly uh, fulfill that requirement and actually look at expanding that requirement because squeezing in 50% of the population into 15% of the market is, uh, you know, arguably not enough. And so we need to look into that requirement and we need to make sure that that happens. So outside of that kind of uh, ordinance, though, uh, we need to look into the kind of housing and development that the state envisions for our state, and that is high-density housing served by transit and um, that's called transit-oriented development, and uh, uh, we need to look at both having mass transit and housing uh, be put together so that we're not simply beholden to the 3,000-pound device that we often get into or basically get into every day to get around. So over the primary, the city spoke. Admittedly, it's an advisory, non-binding measure, but this constituent spoke 63% of us to affirm the original plans of the Veterans Cemetery. What is your position with where we go with that constituent request? Yeah, so I've been uh, opposed to the swap of the uh, location of the Veterans Cemetery from the beginning. I wasn't on the ballot in June, so I didn't take a very open position about this, and I wanted the voters to decide. But I've uh, consistently been opposed to that swap the way it was uh, designed. Um, and that's because it took decades and years of planning to get to the location at the ARDA site. And uh, we need to respect the, all the players that were in place uh, back in 2014, 2015 when this was come to. That included the city. That included the Orange County uh, Memorial Veterans Park group. That included state officials and included the uh, state level electeds. So we need to respect that decision and go forward with the ARDA site. And uh, that's what the voters also voted for in June by a nearly two to one margin, even though, again, Five Point spent $900,000 trying to get yes on the actual swap. And the voters saw through the kind of uh, shenanigans that were being put through their mailbox and voted two to one against it. So I, th I hope the voters again choose people that are and options that are not supported by five point I'm asking everybody too this is a this is a kind of a one of my little outlier kinds of considerations in terms of quality of life and in terms of security there's this notion of social infrastructure and I all my listeners been hearing the last several weeks about Eric Klinenberg or Kleinenberg he's written about this in Palaces for the People and he's looking at for the classic social infrastructure he was referring to as the public library it's a place for civil emergencies people got to get out of a hurricane or uh, are displaced from uh, an earthquake or something like that. It's also a congregating place, and there's this intangible value of people being gathered. I even see it; these the so there's social infrastructure in the a a pop up like the weekly farmers market. People are desperate to congregate and process what's go, what are the developments of the day. So, 
Kev Abazajian, what um, what are examples that you would consider or opportunities for developing further the civil and the social infrastructure inside of the city of Irvine? Yeah, if you look at um, the city of Irvine, there's um, there are some natural places that people gather for community activity. Um, like, for instance, in University Center, there's a large plaza right in the middle uh, with it ringed by stores and restaurants. And um, I sp- often spend time there meeting with, with people uh, about my candidacy. And uh, there's a lot of activity there I've gotten to know. There's Bible study groups that meet on Thursdays there right in the University Center. There are uh, folks that come together with their families and their extended families to get food and, and maybe dessert. Um, and, um, uh, you know, they hang out. And we're lucky enough to be in a place where year-round this outside area is a very comfortable and inviting place to live. And we need to build on these kind of social centers with other activities, cultural activities, educational activities. And uh, I think that would be a great way to extend this kind of social fabric that we have in Irvine kind of naturally already in the plazas in our um, community centers. So, Kev, what have you learned from residents as you've been campaigning for city council? They feel completely underserved and uh, badly served by their elected representation. And this goes to people from backgrounds of all sorts. And, um, you know, people that are uh, progressives, people that are conservatives, people that are middle of the road, they do not feel that the current city council is uh, one that represents their interests over that of uh, the forces that helped get them into that elected office. And I think that that is a sad situation, and that's exactly why I'm running. And the more I talk to constituents, the more I learn that this is a feeling uh, that is very broad among people of many, many backgrounds. And I've talked to a lot of the candidates running, and you know what? Most of them are running because of this feeling. And uh, they are also of varied backgrounds, conservatives and progressives running, because they feel that a narrow group of special interests have taken over this council, and we need change. So we've got, we're down to one week. Where are some times or places and opportunities for people to get to meet you if they haven't already met you? Well, time is short. So if you want to meet me, give me a call. My number is 949-424-5141. I'll meet with you anytime that I'm actually available. I've actually got very few events uh, coming up. The number one thing right now is voter contact. And so if you want to meet with me, check me out. uh, You know, give me a call and I'll arrange uh, a time in your neighborhood where we could meet and have a coffee and uh, or a beer and talk about what's going on. Um, I'll have that number uh, while I'm on the council and uh, you can reach me anytime that way. Well, that was one of our several, many candidates on vying for the two open seats at the city of Irvine. And I want to thank Kev Abizajian for coming all the way down in studio to be with us today. Thank you, Claudia. And okay. I'm sorry, my son is homesick today. And that's oh, why I was late. you got to be, you got to be where you got to be. Thanks for joining us, Kev Abizajian. We'll be